Ocean, Wikipedia article audio. An ocean is a body of saline water that composes much of a planet's hydrosphere. On Earth, an ocean is one of the major conventional divisions of the world ocean. These are, in descending order by area, the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, and Arctic Oceans. The word sea is often used interchangeably with ocean in American English but, strictly speaking, a sea is a body of saline water partly or fully enclosed by land. Etymology Earth's Global Ocean Oceanic Divisions Global System Physical Properties Oceanic Zones Exploration Oceanic Maritime Currents Climate Biology Gases Surface Mixing Time Salinity Absorption of Light Economic Value Waves and Swell Extraterrestrial Oceans Planets Natural Satellites Dwarf Planets and Trans-Neptunian Objects Extrasolar Non-Water Surface Liquids Saline water covers approximately 360 million kilometers too and is customarily divided into several principal oceans and smaller seas, with the ocean covering approximately 71% of Earth's surface and 90% of the Earth's biosphere. The ocean contains 97% of Earth's water, and oceanographers have stated that less than 5% of the world ocean has been explored. The total volume is approximately 1.35 billion cubic kilometers with an average depth of nearly 3,700 meters. As the world ocean is the principal component of Earth's hydrosphere, it is integral to life, forms part of the carbon cycle, and influences climate and weather patterns. The world ocean is the habitat of 230,000 known species but because much of it is unexplored, the number of species that exist in the ocean is much larger, possibly over 2 million. The origin of Earth's oceans is unknown, oceans are thought to have formed in the Hadean Aeon and may have been the impetus for the emergence of life. Extraterrestrial oceans may be composed of water or other elements and compounds. The only confirmed large stable bodies of extraterrestrial surface liquids are the lakes of Titan, although there is evidence for the existence of oceans elsewhere in the solar system. Early in their geologic histories, Mars and Venus are theorized to have had large water oceans. The Mars Ocean Hypothesis suggests that nearly a third of the surface of Mars was once covered by water and a runaway greenhouse effect may have boiled away the global ocean of Venus. Compounds such as salts and ammonia dissolved in water lower its freezing point so that water might exist in large quantities in extraterrestrial environments as brine or convecting ice. Unconfirmed oceans are speculated beneath the surface of many dwarf planets and natural satellites, notably, the ocean of Europa is estimated to have over twice the water volume of Earth. The solar system's giant planets are also thought to have liquid atmospheric layers of yet-to-be-confirmed compositions. Oceans may also exist on exoplanets and exomoons, including surface oceans of liquid water within a circumstellar habitable zone. Ocean planets are a hypothetical type of planet with a surface completely covered with liquid. The word ocean comes from the figure in classical antiquity, Oceanus pronounced, the elder of the titans in classical Greek mythology, believed by the ancient Greeks and Romans to be the divine personification of the sea, an enormous river encircling the world. 
The concept of Okeanos has an Indo-European connection. Greek Okeanos has been compared to the Vedic epithet Asayana, predicated of the dragon V, Tra, who captured the cow-slash-rivers. Related to this notion, the Okeanos is represented with a dragon tail on some early Greek vases. Though generally described as several separate oceans, the global, interconnected body of salt water is sometimes referred to as the world ocean or global ocean. The concept of a continuous body of water with relatively free interchange among its parts is of fundamental importance to oceanography. The major oceanic divisions listed below in descending order of area and volume are defined in part by the continents, various archipelagos, and other criteria. Oceans are fringed by smaller, adjoining bodies of water such as seas, gulfs, bays, bights, and straits. The mid-ocean ridges of the world are connected and form a single global mid-oceanic ridge system that is part of every ocean and the longest mountain range in the world. The continuous mountain range is 65,000 km long. The total mass of the hydrosphere is about 1.4 quintillion metric tons, which is about 0.023% of Earth's total mass. Less than 3% is fresh water, the rest is salt water, almost all of which is in the ocean. The area of the world ocean is about 361.9 million square kilometers which covers about 70.9% of Earth's surface, and its volume is approximately 1.335 billion cubic kilometers. This can be thought of as a cube of water with an edge length of 1,101 kilometers. Its average depth is about 3,688 meters, and its maximum depth is 10,994 meters at the Mariana Trench. Nearly half of the world's marine waters are over 3,000 meters deep. The vast expanses of deep ocean cover about 66% of Earth's surface. This does not include seas not connected to the world ocean, such as the Caspian Sea. The bluish color of water is a composite of several contributing agents. Prominent contributors include dissolved organic matter and chlorophyll. Mariners and other seafarers have reported that the ocean often emits a visible glow which extends for miles at night. In 2005, scientists announced that for the first time, they had obtained photographic evidence of this glow. It is most likely caused by bioluminescence. Oceanographers divide the ocean into different vertical zones defined by physical and biological conditions. The pelagic zone includes all open ocean regions, and can be divided into further regions categorized by depth and light abundance. The photic zone includes the oceans from the surface to a depth of 200 m, it is the region where photosynthesis can occur and is, therefore, the most biodiverse. Because plants require photosynthesis, life found deeper than the photic zone must either rely on material sinking from above or find another energy source. Hydrothermal vents are the primary source of energy in what is known as the aphotic zone. The pelagic part of the photic zone is known as the epipelagic. The pelagic part of the aphotic zone can be further divided into vertical regions according to temperature. The mesopelagic is the uppermost region. Its lowermost boundary is at a thermocline of 12 degrees Celsius, which, in the tropics generally lies at 701,000 meters. Next is the bathypelagic lying between 10 and 4 degrees Celsius typically between 701,000 meters and 2,0004,000 meters, lying along the top of the abyssal plain is the abyssopelagic, whose lower boundary lies at about 6,000 meters. 
The last zone includes the deep oceanic trench, and is known as the Hadal Pelagic. This lies between 6,000-11,000 meters and is the deepest oceanic zone. The benthic zones are aphotic and correspond to the three deepest zones of the deep sea. The bathyal zone covers the continental slope down to about 4,000 meters. The abyssal zone covers the abyssal plains between 4,000 and 6,000 m. Lastly, the hadal zone corresponds to the hadal pelagic zone, which is found in oceanic trenches. The pelagic zone can be further subdivided into two subregions, the neritic zone and the oceanic zone. The neritic zone encompasses the water mass directly above the continental shelves whereas the oceanic zone includes all the completely open water. In contrast, the littoral zone covers the region between low and high tide and represents the transitional area between marine and terrestrial conditions. It is also known as the intertidal zone because it is the area where tide level affects the conditions of the region. If a zone undergoes dramatic changes in temperature with depth, it contains a thermocline. The tropical thermocline is typically deeper than the thermocline at higher latitudes. Polar waters, which receive relatively little solar energy, are not stratified by temperature and generally lack a thermocline because surface water at polar latitudes are nearly as cold as water at greater depths. Below the thermocline, water is very cold, ranging from minus 1 degree Celsius to 3 degrees Celsius. Because this deep and cold layer contains the bulk of ocean water, the average temperature of the world ocean is 3.9 degrees Celsius. If a zone undergoes dramatic changes in salinity with depth, it contains a halocline. If a zone undergoes a strong, vertical chemistry gradient with depth, it contains a chemocline. The halocline often coincides with the thermocline, and the combination produces a pronounced pycnocline. The deepest point in the ocean is the Mariana Trench, located in the Pacific Ocean near the northern Mariana Islands. Its maximum depth has been estimated to be 10,971 meters. The British naval vessel Challenger 2 surveyed the trench in 1951 and named the deepest part of the trench the Challenger Deep. In 1960, the Trieste successfully reached the bottom of the trench, manned by a crew of two men. Oceanic maritime currents have different origins. Tidal currents are in phase with the tide, hence are quasi-periodic, they may form various knots in certain places, most notably around headlands. Non-periodic currents have for origin the waves, wind, and different densities. The wind and waves create surface currents. These currents can decompose in one quasi-permanent current and one movement of stokes drift under the effect of rapid waves movement. The quasi-permanent current is accelerated by the breaking of waves, and in a lesser governing effect, by the friction of the wind on the surface. This acceleration of the current takes place in the direction of waves and dominant wind. Accordingly, when the sea depth increases, the rotation of the earth changes the direction of currents, in proportion with the increase of depth while friction lowers their speed. At a certain sea depth, the current changes direction and is seen inverted in the opposite direction with speed current becoming null, known as the Ekman spiral. The influence of these currents is mainly experienced at the mixed layer of the ocean surface often from 400 to 800 meters of maximum depth. These currents can considerably alter, change and are dependent on the various yearly seasons. If the mixed layer is less thick, the quasi-permanent current at the surface adopts an extreme oblique direction in relation to the direction of the wind, becoming virtually homogeneous, 
until the thermocline. In the deep however, maritime currents are caused by the temperature gradients and the salinity between water density masses. In littoral zones, breaking wave is so intense and the depth measurement so low, that maritime currents reach often 1 to 2 knots. Ocean currents greatly affect Earth's climate by transferring heat from the tropics to the polar regions. Transferring warm or cold air and precipitation to coastal regions, winds may carry them inland. Surface heat and fresh water fluxes create global density gradients that drive the thermohaline circulation part of large-scale ocean circulation. It plays an important role in supplying heat to the polar regions, and thus in sea ice regulation. Changes in the thermohaline circulation are thought to have significant impacts on Earth's energy budget. In so far as the thermohaline circulation governs the rate at which deep waters reach the surface, it may also significantly influence atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. For a discussion of the possibilities of changes to the thermohaline circulation under global warming, see shutdown of thermohaline circulation. It is often stated that the thermohaline circulation is the primary reason that the climate of Western Europe is so temperate. An alternate hypothesis claims that this is largely incorrect, and that Europe is warm mostly because it lies downwind of an ocean basin, and because atmospheric waves bring warm air north from the subtropics. The Antarctic circumpolar current encircles that continent, influencing the area's climate and connecting currents in several oceans. One of the most dramatic forms of weather occurs over the oceans, tropical cyclones. Fish, radiata such as jellyfish, cetacea such as whales, dolphins, and porpoises, cephalopods, such as octopus and squid, crustaceans, such as lobsters, shrimp and krill, marine worms, plankton, echinoderms such as brittle stars, starfish, sea cucumbers and sand dollars. Extraterrestrial liquid water, ocean planet, ice planet. The ocean has a significant effect on the biosphere. Oceanic evaporation, as a phase of the water cycle, is the source of most rainfall, and ocean temperatures determine climate and wind patterns that affect life on land. Life within the ocean evolved 3 billion years prior to life on land. Both the depth and the distance from shore strongly influence the biodiversity of the plants and animals present in each region. Life forms native to the ocean include In addition, Many land animals have adapted to living a major part of their life on the oceans. For instance, seabirds are a diverse group of birds that have adapted to a life mainly on the oceans. They feed on marine animals and spend most of their lifetime on water, many only going on land for breeding. Other birds that have adapted to oceans as their living space are penguins, seagulls, and pelicans. Seven species of turtles, the sea turtles, also spend most of their time in the oceans. A zone of rapid salinity increase with depth is called a halocline. The temperature of maximum density of seawater decreases as its salt content increases. Freezing temperature of water decreases with salinity, and boiling temperature of water increases with salinity. Typical seawater freezes at around minus 1.9 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. If precipitation exceeds evaporation, as is the case in polar and temperate regions, salinity will be lower. If evaporation exceeds precipitation, as is the case in tropical regions, salinity will be higher. Thus, Oceanic waters in polar regions have lower salinity content than oceanic waters in temperate and tropical regions. 
salinity can be calculated using the chlorinity, which is a measure of the total mass of halogen ions in seawater. By international agreement, the following formula is used to determine salinity. Salinity equals 1.80655 times chlorinity. The average chlorinity is about 19.2 per thousand, and, thus, the average salinity is around 34.7 per thousand. Many of the world's goods are moved by ship between the world's seaports. Oceans are also the major supply source for the fishing industry. Some of the major harvests are shrimp, fish, crabs, and lobster. The motions of the ocean surface, known as undulations or waves, are the partial and alternate rising and falling of the ocean surface. The series of mechanical waves that propagate along the interface between water and air is called swell. Although Earth is the only known planet with large stable bodies of liquid water on its surface and the only one in the solar system, other celestial bodies are thought to have large oceans. The gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, are thought to lack surfaces and instead have a stratum of liquid hydrogen, however their planetary geology is not well understood. The possibility of the ice giants Uranus and Neptune having hot, highly compressed, supercritical water under their thick atmospheres has been hypothesized. Although their composition is still not fully understood, a 2006 study by Victor Roas and Ingersoll ruled out the possibility of such a water ocean existing on Neptune, though some studies have suggested that exotic oceans of liquid diamond are possible. The Mars Ocean Hypothesis suggests that nearly a third of the surface of Mars was once covered by water, though the water on Mars is no longer oceanic. The possibility continues to be studied along with reasons for their apparent disappearance. Astronomers think that Venus had liquid water and perhaps oceans in its very early history. If they existed, all later vanished via resurfacing. A global layer of liquid water thick enough to decouple the crust from the mantle is thought to be present on the natural satellites Titan, Europa, Enceladus and with less certainty, Callisto, Ganymede, and Triton. A magma ocean is thought to be present on Io. Geysers have been found on Saturn's moon Enceladus, possibly originating from about 10 kilometers deep ocean beneath an ice shell. Other icy moons may also have internal oceans, or may once have had internal oceans that have now frozen. Large bodies of liquid hydrocarbons are thought to be present on the surface of Titan, although they are not large enough to be considered oceans and are sometimes referred to as lakes or seas. The Cassini-Huygens space mission initially discovered only what appeared to be dry lake beds and empty river channels, suggesting that Titan had lost what surface liquids it might have had. Cassini's more recent flyby of Titan offers radar images that strongly suggest hydrocarbon lakes exist near the colder polar regions. Titan is thought to have a subsurface liquid water ocean under the ice and hydrocarbon mix that forms its outer crust. Ceres appears to be differentiated into a rocky core and icy mantle and may harbor a liquid water ocean under its surface. Not enough is known of the larger trans-Neptunian objects to determine whether they are differentiated bodies capable of supporting oceans, although models of radioactive decay suggest that Pluto, Eris, Sedna, and Orcus have oceans beneath solid icy crusts approximately 100 to 180 kilometers thick. Some planets and natural satellites outside the solar system are likely to have oceans, including possible water ocean planets similar to Earth in the habitable zone or a liquid water belt. The detection of oceans, even through the spectroscopy method, however is likely extremely difficult and inconclusive.
Theoretical models have been used to predict with high probability that GJ 1214b, detected by transit, is composed of exotic form of I-7, making up 75% of its mass, making it an ocean planet. Other possible candidates are merely speculated based on their mass and position in the habitable zone include planet though little is actually known of their composition. Some scientists speculate Kepler 22b may be an ocean-like planet. Models have been proposed for Glias 581d that could include surface oceans. Glias 436b is speculated to have an ocean of hot ice. Exomons orbiting planets, particularly gas giants within their parent star's habitable zone may theoretically have surface oceans. Terrestrial planets will acquire water during their accretion, some of which will be buried in the magma ocean but most of it will go into a steam atmosphere, and when the atmosphere cools it will collapse onto the surface forming an ocean. There will also be outgassing of water from the mantle as the magma solidifies this will happen even for planets with a low percentage of their mass composed of water, so super-Earth exoplanets may be expected to commonly produce water oceans within tens to hundreds of millions of years of their last major accretionary impact. Oceans, seas, lakes, and other bodies of liquids can be composed of liquids other than water, for example the hydrocarbon lakes on Titan. The possibility of seas of nitrogen on Triton was also considered but ruled out. There is evidence that the icy surfaces of the moons Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, Titan, and Enceladus are shells floating on oceans of very dense liquid water or water ammonia. Earth is often called the ocean planet because it is 70% covered in water. Extrasolar terrestrial planets that are extremely close to their parent star will be tidally locked and so one half of the planet will be a magma ocean. It is also possible that terrestrial planets had magma oceans at some point during their formation as a result of giant impacts. Hot Neptunes close to their star could lose their atmospheres via hydrodynamic escape, leaving behind their cores with various liquids on the surface. Where there are suitable temperatures and pressures, Volatile chemicals that might exist as liquids in abundant quantities on planets include ammonia, argon, carbon disulfide, ethane, hydrazine, hydrogen, hydrogen cyanide, hydrogen sulfide, methane, neon, nitrogen, nitric oxide, phosphine, silane, sulfuric acid, and water. Supercritical fluids, although not liquids, do share various properties with liquids. Underneath the thick atmospheres of the planets Uranus and Neptune, it is expected that these planets are composed of oceans of hot high-density fluid mixtures of water, ammonia, and other volatiles. The gaseous outer layers of Jupiter and Saturn transition smoothly into oceans of supercritical hydrogen. The atmosphere of Venus is 96.5% carbon dioxide, which is a supercritical fluid at its surface. On other bodies